Living Fiction. Northwestern University, in cooperation with the National Broadcasting Company, brings you a radio dramatization of a colorful story of the early West, The Luck of Roaring Camp by Bret Hart, another in a series of living fiction. Can't you see we're playing? You're always doing that. Yeah. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you'd like to raise a little objection to our using your dirty little back room. Now, Kentuck, I didn't mean no harm. Forget I said anything. How about it, Kentuck? Uh, hit me with two. Well, what are you trying to do, give everybody else a look at them? Sandy? I'll stand, Pat. Stumpy? I'll keep these. Boston? Three. Naked Joe just came in the bar room. French Pete's back there. They've been laying for each other. <laughs> Looks like there might be a little trouble. Yeah. Deuce is wild? No, no yellow dogging. Twenty. Uh, Joe and Pete are in each other. I'll raise you twenty. Yeah? I'll raise you twenty. I check. Joe's getting plenty robbed. I'll raise you 30. I call you. I've got a full house. Uh, straight. Flush. Four of a kind. Uh, Royal flush. Looks like I take the pile. Uh, Why, you sandbagger, you check, huh? Pretending you didn't have nothing. You mean you trusted me, Kentuck? Uh, come on, let's have another hand. Hmm. You and Pete's drawing the guns. Your deal, Boston. place is getting noisier all the time. Boys, French Pete and Kaneka Joe just shot each other to death over the bar. Yeah, we've seen it. Come on, Oakhurst, get the deal started. Yeah. That was Rowan Camp up to 1850. A desperate, lawless band of some 100 men. I say it till 1850, because in that year, on a certain day, there was for once a situation novel enough to draw the whole camp together. Even the gamblers left the tables. The men were collected before a rude cabin on the outer edge of the clearing. Been there for some time. The conversation went something like it. You know, well, Stumpy's been in there an awful long time. Yeah, how much longer you reckon we gotta wait? We ain't been sitting around here more than an hour. Sometimes takes days. Days? Well, like I ain't got that kind of time to waste. Well, now I reckon you don't have much to say about how long it's gonna take, Sandy. Maybe we shouldn't have sent Stumpy in there. Maybe he don't know as much about it as we thought he did. He sure knows as much as the rest of us. Most likely more. Yeah, well, that's so. It uh, ain't exactly in our line. Well, now, Stumpy didn't want to do it any more than we would have. I'm willing to say he took his election like a man. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Far be it for me to have a soft heart, boys. I am human, and I think it's kind of rough on Cherokee Sal. Oh, Sal's a pretty tough customer. Yeah, but all the same, being in her predicament and being the only woman in Roaring Camp, being how there ain't another woman within miles, well, I just think it's kind of rough on her. I sure wish Stumpy would at least stick his head out the door and tell us how things is going. Yeah, maybe one of us ought to go in there and see how things is progressing. Why, sure, Kenta. Nobody's stopping you. Go right ahead. Me? <laughs> it was your ID. I meant somebody else. Well, I'm not going in. <laughs> not this man. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to sit it out, Kenta. I, gentlemen, uh, would not be averse to wagering three to five that Sal will come through it. I wondered how long you'd hold out without making a bet, old <laughs> Gentlemen... 
I consider this a rare and golden opportunity for an honest game of chess. Well, I'll take the bet, Oakhurst. I don't think Sal's got a chance. Well, I say she has, and five dollars says so, too. You're on. Wonder if it'll happen before sundown. Ten dollars says it will. I'll cover that. Not gonna be till tomorrow. Twenty says tonight. You're on. Uh, right. Uh, uh, you ever seen one? Nah. I ain't got no time for them. Well, who has? You know, gentlemen, I would have said that nothing that happened in Roaring Camp would surprise me. But I didn't count on this. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> well, come, gentlemen. Uh, let's get some more bets my, going. No, there are still a lot of angles we haven't it's taken sides on yet. I'll take the bet. I'll cover that. Hey, 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 hey. Did you hear what I did? Yeah, I thought I did. Well, I'll be a horn-toed fool. Stop it! It's a woman! Gentlemen, gentlemen, those of you who uh, would like to come in and see the baby will please pass in single file at the front door here, around the table on which is the baby lying inside that there candle box, and then uh, pass on out the back door. Yeah, let me in there. I want to see. Uh, get over there, right? Uh, How's the head of you, Kentuck? Well, I'm here now, you know. You heard what Stubby said, O'Kerr, oh, single file. Stop shoving, will you? Let me kindly in there. I want shut to up. Yeah, yeah, shut up! Seeing as how, we don't want to disturb the baby. Them gentlemen as wishes to contribute anything toward the orphan will find a hat handy. Orphan? Yep. You mean Sal, uh... Oh, wasn't able to save her. I said it'd go hard with Sal. Yeah, well, uh, let's have a peep at this kid. <laughs> well, come on in, our fellas. Uh, is that him? <laughs> Couldn't be too that ugly. He ain't more than got the color. Mighty small specimen. He ain't bigger than a derringer. Look at him, Kentuck. Yeah, but he's got to bend over close to even make him out. <laughs> he ain't been living more than an hour, and he's as wrinkled as an old man. <laughs> Oh, he looked that darn little cuss. He's wrestling with my finger. <laughs> Is it that, King, sir? Wrestling with my finger. Say, Stumpy. Uh, yep? The Cherokee sales done passed out on us. What's the chances for the kid here living? You know, I was wondering about that myself. A baby's got to have food and uh, not the kind of chow we eat. There ain't yeah. no other woman with a new baby within 50 miles of here. Uh, I done thought about that. Uh, it presents a problem, but... Uh, I thought maybe Jenny could pinch it. Jenny? You mean that there donkey? She just gave birth the other day. Mule mill. <laughs> I ain't never heard there was nothing wrong with it. <laughs> ain't never heard nothing good about it, neither. <laughs> if you don't hanker after the idea, Boston, let's see you find some other solution. Oh, I didn't mean no offense, Dumpy. Reckon there ain't any other solution but Jenny. Well, I guess that settles it. You've been mighty quiet, Kentuck. What do you got to say about it? Hey, Russell, with my finger, that darn little cut. <laughs> <laughs> Sure is ugly critter, ain't he? Well, he might grow to look better with time, right, huh? Well, seems to me you're uh, getting kind of soft about that kid, Kentuck. What? Yeah, Kentuck. He took to you. Oh, I ain't got no time for a baby. They're more trouble than they're worth. Well, that's so. Well, I've had enough for tonight. I think I'll turn in. Yeah, same here. It's four in the morning already. You sure wasted a heap of time, John, about that kid. You coming, Kentuck? Hmm? Oh, no, not yet a while. Uh, suit yourself. I got a long day in the ditch tomorrow. Have another, Kentuck? Huh? I said, do you want another drink? Oh, uh, no, Shorty. I'm leaving. All right. Here's a tip. Well, thanks, Kentuck. Thanks. Don't mention it. Kind of feel like it's a celebration. Well, Kentuck. Who cursed? 
How about one short game? Nope, I'm turning in. You're uh, not heading toward your bunkhouse. Well, I thought I'd stroll down by the river first. Mm Mm-hmm. Good night, Kentuck. So long. me, Stumpy. Kentuck. What you doing here? Oh, I just, uh... Well, I figured I'd come on. Uh, how goes it with the kid? Uh, oh, he's fine, yeah. Uh, Nothing up? Nothing, uh... Why are you losing good sleep to come and ask about him? Well, I noticed you ain't a bed. Oh, uh, well, I... I figured he might need something, and, uh... Not being able to speak up and ask for it, uh... Yeah, sure, well, uh... You mind if I come in and have a look? No, no, glad of the company. I've got some things to show you. Uh, come on in. Um... Shh. You shouldn't have slammed that door. Me? You done it? I never did. Well, uh, no matter, the kid didn't bat an eye. Uh, like I was fixing to say, uh, been going over the contributions the fellers made this afternoon. Uh, mm-hmm. Done pretty well by the kid. Yeah, what'd you get? Well, here's the pile. There's a silver tobacco box yeah. and a navy revolver with a yeah. silver mount. Well, I reckon he ain't gonna have use for that for a while. If he sticks around roaring long enough, it'll come in handy. Yeah. And look here, uh, a fancy lady's handkerchief <laughs> and a diamond breastpin. And look at the jewels in it. Uh, here's a ring just as swell. Uh, yeah. Golden spurs and a silver teaspoon, some scissors, yeah. and uh, lots of money. <laughs> it must be close to $200 there. Reckon so. I've... Well, look at this. That can't be a... It sure is. But how how in tarnation did a Bible ever get into roaring camp? Well, I'm glad you guys went on and just do it. Try to kill us when they get that if you new fellas gonna keep on arguing amongst yourselves, we ain't never gonna reach no unanimous decision about the kid. Well, we decided unanimously to adopt him. Yeah. But that ain't figured out how you're gonna take care of him. I still say we ought to send the kid to Red Dog. That's 40 miles away. I don't care if it's 100. It's the nearest town where there's any women folks that could take care of the little coyote. Uh, oh, I don't want women. Now, sir, Sandy, words. he was born in Roaring Camp and he belongs in uh, Roaring Camp. Well, uh, what about engaging a female nurse to come here and take care of him? Why, you know no woman in her right mind had come to Roaring Camp to live. Yeah, what do you got to say about it, Stumpy? Well, um, seeing as how I've been taking care of the kid, I I figured I'd best not say nothing, I... I want that everybody should speak right up, and if they don't think I've been handling things right... Oh, no, it ain't that, Stumpy. you done good so far. Sure you have, Stump. Think you could keep on at it? Well, I... I, I reckon Jenny and me can manage. Well, that settles it, then. But hold on, we ain't through yet. If we're going to keep the kid, we got to have a name for him. We can't just keep on calling him the Coyote or the Little Cuss. Yeah, yeah that's, that's well... Uh, well, what do we call him? I have a name to suggest. Uh... Yeah? Uh, what's that, okay? Well, gentlemen, I have observed that since the baby was born, he has brought the luck to Roaring Camp. You mean you've been winning more yeah. than usual, eh? <laughs> no, no, gentlemen, yeah. gentlemen. I, I wasn't speaking for myself alone. Ask yourselves. Is there one of you who hasn't fared better since his arrival? Even the gold seems more plentiful in the gulches. Hmm. No, um, I, I think maybe Oakhurst got something there. Uh, right. Well, then, what better name than Luck? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, but he's got to have more than one name. What about Tommy for a first name? We can call him the Luck. Uh, Tommy Luck. And we'll set aside a day for the christening. Christening? What? We shouldn't deny the little orphan a christening, Ryder. 
All I ask is that I be master of ceremonies. Don't you mean the minister? <laughs> In Roaring, I think master of ceremonies will do just as well. <laughs> and I shall assemble a choir and direct it. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, choir? <laughs> This is going to be a real shit day. Reckon we won't have had so much side-splitting fun in years. A church service. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much time was spent in Roaring Camp preparing a burlesque of the church service. A mock altar was set up in the grove, and on the appointed day, a large procession marched into the ravine to the accompaniment of music, carrying banners. Boston, whose humorous brain had contrived the satire, stepped up to the altar on which the child had been placed. But just then a strange thing happened. Stumpy got out before the crowd and pushed Boston aside. Strange thing. Or was it? Uh, boys, uh, boys, it ain't exactly my style to spoil the fun, but, uh, it strikes me that this thing ain't on the square. What do you mean, Stubby? Well, uh, we're just making a laughing stock of this service. Oh, aren't that the idea? Uh, uh, reckon so. I, I agreed to it myself at first, but... After thinking it over, it just seems like playing a pretty low trick on this here baby to ring fun on him that he ain't going to understand. Uh, just because, just because we ain't never been what you might call religious men, I, I don't see that that gives us no call to inflict it on this innocent kid. Stumpy, you said a gold dang mouth. Uh, I agree. Much as I hate to see a joke wasted, I'll go along. Reckon he was carrying things a bit too far. Uh, but wait up, Boston. Um, we're here for a christening, and, and we'll have it. Uh, let me pick up the baby now. Uh, 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 I proclaim you Thomas Luck, uh, according to the laws of the United States and the state of California. Uh, so, so help me God. Uh, amen. Yeah, that's right, Boston. Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 So the work of regeneration began in Roaring Camp. The next thing was a rosewood cradle packed 80 miles by mule. This, uh, cradle's done sort of spile the rest of Luck's cabin, uh, eh, Kentuck? Yeah, you're right, Stumpy. We'd better get new furniture for it and, and whitewash the cabin, too. Now, we gotta get a lot of clothes for the Luck, or we'll send to Sacramento for them. The best they have, lace, you know, and the filigree work and frills, uh, hang the cost. Boys, uh, since I've been appointed sort of nurse to the luck, I, I gotta lay down the rule that before any of you are allowed to hold him, you... You gotta pass a cleanliness inspection. I've been an express man for now under 30 years. Thought I'd seen everything, but that roaring camp beats all. Don't mind admitting it used to kind of tingle my spine to go in there. But now they got vines and flowers around their houses. They wash themselves twice a day. And they worship an Indian baby. Uh, who be you, stranger? What are you talking about, Boston? Oh, it's you, Kentuck. I still have a hard time recognizing you since you took to shaving every day. <laughs> All right. And with them clean fingernails and boiled shirts, you're getting to be a regular dude. Uh, that's right. Well, I don't see you got much cause to talk. You're shiny as a racehorse. All right for me to hold a luck, Stumpy. 
Uh, yeah, Kentuck. Uh, you pass the inspection. <laughs> All right. Now look at him looking at me. And I swear, I think he knows me. He ought to be talking soon, don't you think? Oh, he ain't nigh to six months yet, Kentuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if he could talk, he'd have a heap to say. He's got more sense in his face than most folks I know. Including you, Kentuck? You bet. De- <laughs> You bet. You know, the more I see the luck growing, the more something worries me. What's that, Sandy? Well, no matter how much we fancy ourselves up, we still can't make up to him for what it would mean to have some women around Roaring. Now, wait a minute, Sandy. One of the few good things about Roaring is that we ain't got no women folks around trying to tell us how to do things. Well, I don't like the idea of it any more than you do, Ryder. Speaking personally. Well, a bunch of women cluttering up. Well, it wouldn't have to be too many. Well, now, one's too many. But we got the luck to think about. Now, Now, hold on a minute, Ryder, till I explain what the plan was. Now, I thought we could build a sort of small hotel in Roaring come spring. Small, but really nice. And invite one or two decent families to live here. That way, there'd be women about who'd be really interested in the kids. Well, um, I like your idea, Sandy, uh... Like as not, there'd be other kids for the luck to play with when he gets yeah, older. Yeah, sure. the women would probably turn the luck against us. The luck against oh. us? His family? Not a chance. Well, I'm for it. With the money we made last year, it wouldn't pinch us none to build a hotel. You know that, Ryder. Oh, it ain't wouldn't. the money I'm thinking of. You believe you could actually persuade some decent folks to come here? Sure. Roaring ain't what it used to be. Uh, everybody in Red Dog and Pocos Flats been talking about the change come over us since luck was born. I'm with you on it. Uh, we got to make that oily talking old curse swear he won't get none of them in the card game. <laughs> and uh, why should I be the only one who hasn't come under the good influence of the luck? Well, everybody's agreed then, but you, Ryder. Oh, I ain't going to stand in the way if the rest of you think it's the right thing to do. But I don't mind telling you. I hope some other way turns up for us to take care of the luck. <laughs> Another way did turn up, but a way which even Ryder wouldn't have approved. The winter of 1851 will long be remembered in the foothills of the Sierras. The snow was deep on the peaks, and every mountain creek became a river, every river a lake. Each gorge and gulch was transformed into a tumultuous water course that descended the hillside, tearing down giant trees and scattering its drifts and debris along the plain. And then one night. Kentuck. Kentuck, wake up. Huh? Wake up there. Oh, can't you let a tired body sleep? Wake up, I tell you. Something funny's going on outside. Oh, you dreaming. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Now, go back to sleep. I'm not dreaming, Kentuck. Wake up. Listen for yourself. Listen to that. It must be raining outside. That's rain my foot. What else could it be? I'll bet my bottom dollar the North Fork's done jumped its bank. (laughs) You imagining things, Sandy. I reckon I imagined that Red Dog got flooded last week. Yeah, well, that's so. And you know what Stumpy said no more than yesterday. What was that? He said, water put gold into them gulchers. It's been here once and it'll be here again. But well, listen to that. Yeah, it's getting louder. Let's have a look outside. Yeah. It's the North Fork, all right. Look, there's a foot of water around our shack right now. Beginning to seep inside. And it's getting higher all the time. Which way's it coming from? Up there, up the valley. That means near Stumpy's cabin. Coming along a mile a minute. Hey, somebody's running toward us. Oh, Curse. Come on, you two. Don't stand there if you value your lives. The cards are stacked against Warren tonight. That was a short he's playing. The place collapsed right after I stepped out the door. Have you seen Stumpy? No. Where's the other fellow? I don't know. It's every man for himself tonight. You haven't seen Stumpy in the cave. I told you no. This is no time for conversation. If you aren't coming, goodbye. We're with you, Oakhurst. Come on, Kentuck. Yeah. Kentuck, not that way. You head right into the flood. I gotta get to Stumpy. You'll be killed, Kentuck. Don't be a fool. Come back, Kentuck. Come back. Kentuck! Not a building standing. It's a wonder there's any of us alive. I ain't never seen nothing like that water last night. Here's Stumpy's cabin. What's left of it. Roof torn off. Wall caved in. Look here. Little red blanket. 
That was the locks. It seems like we could at least find a trace of them, even if they was... Maybe they got out in time. Maybe. Stumpy's cabin was right in the path of the crest, being so near to the river here. Here comes Oakhurst. Some of us have just been on a searching party. Find anything? Uh, anybody? Stumpy. Alive? No. Where? He'd... He'd been washed high up in the gulch. Was he... alone? Yeah. Ain't... Ain't seen nothing of the... the luck. Not a sign. They... They say where there's life, there's... there's hope. Uh Uh-huh. Where's Kentuck, Sandy? I... I don't know. What do you mean, don't know? You bunked together. I couldn't stop him. What are you talking about? He ran head on into the floodwaters. I yelled and yelled to him to come back. I told him he'd get himself killed. He wouldn't listen to me. He must have lost his mind from fear. That don't sound like Kentuck. Nah. Kentuck's the bravest man in Roaring. Barring nobody. Hey there, you men. It's a relief boat coming up the river. One of the men is waving at us. He must want to see us about something. Come on. You calling to us? Yeah. We picked up a man and a baby downstream a piece. Yeah. Oh. Pretty nigh exhausted. Thought maybe they belonged here. Did you say a baby? That's right. Here they are. It's Kentuck and the kid. Look how Kentuck's holding him. Kentuck afraid? Huh. <laughs> There's your answer. He wasn't afraid. He went back for the kid. Kentuck's still breathing. A little. But the luck? The luck is dead. Look. Kentuck's opening his eyes. He sees us. Kentuck? Hello, boys. Did... Did you say he's... Yeah, Kentuck. He is. It weren't your fault. How do you think I'm doing... No sandbagging, Poston. I'll play it straight, Kenta. You're dying, too. Dying? Yeah. That's right. He's taking me with him. Tell the boys. Tell the boys. I got the luck with me now. And the strong man clinging to the frail baby drifted away into the shadowy river that flows forever to the unknown sea. The luck of Roaring Camp was ended. The Luck of Roaring Camp by Bret Hart is another in a series of living fiction presented each week by Northwestern University in cooperation with the National Broadcasting Company. The Luck of Roaring Camp was adapted for radio by Agnes Eckert. The cast and directors were students of Northwestern University. Kentuck was played by Tam Spiva, Stumpy by Ansel Ressler, Sandy by George Hurd, Oakhurst by Jim Petrasevich, Ryder by Rush Evans, Boston by Bob Tack, and the narration was by Skipper Truly. Others were Helen Kasky and Lincoln Bumba. The assistant director was Dick Reeves. The director was Jim Holston. The entire production was under the supervision of John Cowan. This is Hugh Downs speaking. This is the NBC Radio Network.